Okay, welcome back, ENG 460, and this is part four of our um, decimal to octal converter. All right, so we uh, demoed the program in part one, and we went through the main procedure. In the last couple of videos, we've been talking about individual procedures in main, and right now we're down to divide by eight. So let's take a look at this code right here. Now this kind of is like a typical procedure, right? Because the jump and link calls divide by eight. But divide by 8 expects two input arguments, a0, a1. And in a0, it expects the um, value, the base. All right. So remember, s0 was the base that we're converting to. So the base needs to get passed into a0. And then the actual value that we're going to convert gets passed into s2. And remember, s2 was uh, holding the value of n. So we need to pass in the base and n. Then we divide by 8 then what this procedure does is it returns two values, v0 and v1. v0 is the quotient when I take n divided by 8. And then v1 is the remainder when I take n divided by 8, but that's the same thing as n modulo 8. And then we move up those back to s2 and s3. And s2 and 3 hold our quotient and remainder. All right. So let's go ahead and test out that procedure. Okay. So we come along here. We uh, open this guy. And let's see, we try to find that. Let's see, where is that? We want to test out the divide by 8. But I want to set my breakpoint not inside divide by 8, but I want to set it right here where I set up the input parameters. Okay, so I want to uh, set a breakpoint here, and then I am going to run this program. Okay, now here it's in prompt for n, so let me type in that. Okay, and now I hit a breakpoint, and I will single step. So see, I hit a breakpoint right after. Um, actually, it executes the instruction where the breakpoint is, and then it moves the program counter to the next one. But at this point, let's just double check every single line of code. Now, we should have moved S0 to A0. Let's go check that that happened. Did S0, which was 8, get moved to A0? Yes, it did. Okay, that's good. I got a warm fuzzy on that one. Now, let's execute this instruction, which is going to move S2 to A1. Well, let's see if that happened. Did S2 get moved to A1? Yes, it did. And of course, we can click decimal, and that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That's our number. All right. So we're good on that one. OK, so we set up our parameters. Now we jump and link divide by 8. Let me hit F10. And now notice I jumped all the way down here to divide by 8. And here, using my no ops, is um, my uh, instruction. You know, it starts up here. So my procedure goes all the way down to here. OK, so I'm at my no op. I hit F10. And then what you do is you take your a0 and a1 and move them to t0 and t1. You cache them locally. Okay, now we're not using s's here. We're using t's, which means I don't have to push and pop on the stack. All right, so let's just check that a0 and a1 got moved to t0 and t1. Okay, there's a0, a1. Did it a0 get moved to t0? It sure did. Did a1 get moved to t1? Yeah, sure did. All right, we're good there. And then what do we do? All right, we're going to divide now. Divide t1 by t0 and put the results on the high and low register. High has the remainder, low has the quotient. Remainder is what's going to be our octal digit, the modulus. So let's go back and look at our high and low register real quick. Notice the high and low register are 0. Okay. Let's go back to our program. Do the divide unsigned. I'm going to hit F10. So I should have taken T1 divided by T0. Okay. Let's go back to integer registers. And notice, yeah, so let's convert back to decimal. We took 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We divided it by 8. And um, we got this guy right here. All right, let's bring in our calculator. Let's go to uh, standard. And let's take 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And divide, oops, that guy by 8. What do you get? Yeah, so it, it actually goes in an even number. And there's your quotient, 15432, and then the remainder is 0. OK? All right, so that's good. So we just divided by 8. So we can double check that. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to take the quotient and the remainder and put those guys into the v0 and v1. All right, so we're going to move low to v0 and move high to v1. Let's check that happened. Let's see, low should have gone to um, v0. And high should have gone to V1. And it did. High went to V1. Low went to V0. And then we do jump return, return address. 
All right, so at that point, I feel, and then now I'm back in Maine, I feel pretty good. Yeah, that procedure works. And then back in Maine, you still have a couple things to do. You need to extract the parameters. You need to move V0 and V1 to S2 and 3. Let's go look. I need to move V0 and V1 to S2 and S3. Okay, they're not currently there. See, this is right here. This is the new value that we've divided by 8. This was the old value. All right, so let's use, go back to our code. Use F10 to step over. And now V0, V1 should have got moved to S2 and S3. There's V0, and it is moved to S2. There's V1, and it is moved to S3. All right, we're good. So at that point, I'm just going to, I feel confident that that procedure worked, and I am going to uh, just finish out my program. Oh, let's see, I got another breakpoint. Oh, actually. Yep, oh, I see. We've got the breakpoint inside the loop. I haven't talked about the loop yet. So, yeah, so we're hitting that breakpoint every single time. Yep, and then we're done. All right, I'm going to stop there, and next time we'll talk about. Um, Let's see, not the divide by 8, but we'll do store remainder to global memory. All right, thanks for watching.